Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at a very simple command in iNav, which allows you to copy your settings from one model to the next. And we're also going to be looking at a couple of settings which you probably don't want to transfer, and it will make more sense as we go in. So with that said, let's just dive straight in. I've got my flight controller connected uh, to my desktop right now. Ironically, it is the Zo HD Drift 250G, and let's just say that I or you ordered another model, and you have the same or a very similar flight controller in there, and you don't want to enter all the details again. Now, I just want to stress this is for the bulk of the other settings. You shouldn't copy across things like calibration, and we will get to that in a few moments' time. Anyway, let's speed on, and you'll notice that I've come straight down to the CLI tab. So, there are a set of advanced commands. Let's just type in help for a moment and hit enter, uh, and you'll see that there's a whole range of commands. And the one which we are looking for is the diff command so let's type in diff now and hit return and oh my goodness me there's a load of settings which have been and turned up and this is exactly what we are after is that you'll notice here from the diff command onwards is that you've got batch start and all of these settings here are all of the settings so if I scroll here that that's my survey mixer uh, then we've got the modes as well and we will look at these in a few moments time as well uh, we've got the auxiliary those are the modes so imagine you, you don't have to enter all the modes again in your next model which could be take forever you can literally copy and paste these uh, out from this model and then paste them into the next model and type save and jobs a good one the same for my OSD layout. You will notice that I've got layout 0, 1, 2, and actually there's a third one in there as well. You can have multiple different uh, on-screen display layouts with iNav, and rather than manually configure them each time, so you can literally just copy and paste this text uh, into your next one, uh, and jobs a good one. Now, there are some very wary ones which you need to be careful of, and I will point those out in a moment, but let's plow on. Uh, you'll also notice that we have uh, like the battery bulge scale and the current meter scale, which you probably want to ignore. But the other things like the platform type, the model preview, uh, the waypoint settings, the cruise angle and things like that uh, would be highly advantageous for us to just copy and paste them into the next model and save ourselves loads and loads of time. Now, what we can do is copy to clipboard. However, we did type help before and there's going to be loads of extra junk in there. So what I'm actually going to do is quickly disconnect wait for it to reconnect, then go to the CLL type, and that's what I would suggest for you too. So I'm typing D-I-F-F, -F, hit return, and there's all our settings. Now you could highlight them and copy them, or you could save them to a file. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy to them to the clipboard, and then we're gonna quickly run down and delete a couple which you probably wanna be a little bit wary of. Okay, hands up, I just realized I made a mistake just there learn from my mistake if you click clear output history then that will clear the output which is on the screen eventually but it does as you can see take a moment or two anyway going back to our dump of settings and what the diff command means is the difference between the default settings and the settings which you have been and changed within inav now these settings will obviously only really so the the board specific ones which we'll get to in a moment are only specific to a Matec 411 WSC and uh, version. If you're going from, say, a flying wing to, uh, I don't know, just a normal model which has got ailerons, elevator, and rudder, uh, you probably do not want to cover uh, across uh, the mix uh, and the motor mixes to your model. Okay, so I would probably suggest that you remove those from there and the same for the servos too. However, if it's a like for like model, a wing to a wing, hey, knock yourself out. Uh, it does mean that it will save you some trouble when and time when setting up the mixer tab. Okay, so in my instance, I'm gonna pretend that it's a different model, so we're gonna remove those. Now, the one setting in here for you to be wary of is feature fixed wing launch. If that is present, then it will turn on auto launch by default, which is probably not desirable 
for a new model which you're just setting up with INAV. Uh, uh, and the, by the way, the process for uh, setting up uh, auto launch for INAV, I will cover in a separate video, but my the point here is that you probably do not want that enabled by default in a brand new model, so we're gonna remove that. Now the serial connection is that I'm also gonna remove that too because that means it's, that's the uh, ports tab and that's telling, uh, in this instance, it's telling INAV that on port uh, on serial zero, we have a GPS unit. That may be different for a different board, so we're getting rid of that as well. Auxiliary, this is our mode tab within INAV and just the time saved by not having to do these manually it's just, that's what this video is about. It's not, it's saving you masses amount of time. Uh, and auxiliary means the modes tab on the left hand side. So it's set in a horizon, it's set in manual, maybe a camera switcher, maybe your auto tune, your server trim. Oh, the list just goes on and on and on. Okay, that's my settings and that's how I like my mode set up for all of my iNav models. So I literally just copy and paste those in. Now next on to the OSD layout. So as you may or may not know within iNav, you can have multiple on-screen display layouts, which is super handy. And that's what some of those set modes options above allow us to switch between. Now rather than manually move those items around the screen, which takes forever every single time, what you can do is literally copy and paste these settings and then put them back into the CLI tab and type in save and jobs done. No more messing around, copy and paste easy. Now, I did mention there are a couple of settings to be wary of, uh, and the first of it, it's because it's board specific. So, what I would strongly suggest is that you'll notice these first couple of settings from uh, ACK hardware to the uh, ACK Zero uh, and these games and things like that. So, these ones here are what happens when you calibrate, calibrate, if I can pronounce that correctly, when you calibrate your flight controller, is that these are specific to each and every flight controller. So what, just because you have the same flight controller, it doesn't mean that it's gonna calibrate exactly the same time each time. That's why it needs to be a separate step. And the way you get around that is that you just delete this from your uh, different file. Now, I would strongly suggest that you go further than that and remove all the way from pit up hardware uh, which is for the airspeed sensor up and remove there from the, from your difference file because you different boards support different things and you may have one with an airspeed sensor you may have one with a different barometer for example uh, and so on and so forth however all the settings from here are pretty much fair game. Uh, again, you'll see that I've got nav control smoothness is one, climb angle, uh, return to home altitude, uh, when to allow landing, which is always never for me. Uh, the same for having the Galileo satellites on and then use the new block seven. Uh, and, and imagine all the time it's just saving you by not putting these settings in manually. In fact, some of these settings you can only put in via the console themselves. Oh, you may want to change that, the, the name, which is the uh, on-screen display name of the model. So maybe we are going from the Dart 250G into maybe the Drift. You can change the name in there. Now, the Profile 1 here, you will notice that I have some auto-tune settings. You will most likely want to remove those because the auto-tune settings from one model type to another model type are not going to be the same. So you would definitely want to remove those. Right, now you may, may be wondering, Matt, that's all fine and dandy. I've been and changed all my settings. How do I apply them to my flight controller? Which is very simple. Highlight them all and let's go back to iNav. And if you can manage copy and paste and type in save, jobs are good. So you come down into the CLI tab and you literally take the text which you copied uh, and any settings which you've got on there, you right click and choose copy, come into here, right click and then choose paste and then hit enter. And you will notice that it takes a few moments for all of those settings to go through. However, however long that takes is infinitely faster than doing it in manually. And then what you would do is type in save, hit 
enter and your board will reboot. Now I'm not gonna do that on mine um, because I don't wanna save those settings. However, in your case, type in save uh, and then the board will reboot. And of course, when you connect back into iNav to your flight controller, which was devoid of all settings just a few moments ago, once mine decides to reconnect. Hey, there she goes. And then that means that when you go to your modes tab, for example, all of your modes are gonna be in there. Imagine setting all those manually. That is why the diff command is super helpful because it really is a case of copy and paste. You just need to be wary of a couple of those settings which I covered a few moments ago. However, I do want to stress, this is no substitute for actually calibrating your flight controller which needs to be done for each and every flight controller which you own. And of course, your mixer and outputs may vary from one model to another. So you'll see this one's actually set up in the TART 250G, so we only have ailerons. However, if you have a normal fixed wing model, you may want, and definitely probably would want, a different set of servo mixers, which you can choose from the defaults up here, and then just click load and apply. So with that said for myself, Matt, I sincerely hope that genuinely helps you save time when you want to copy the settings from one iNav install, which you know is good, to another one. It saves me loads of time, and I know that it will save you loads of time because it's just a case of going, typing diff, copying the settings, taking a few out, and then pasting them into your new flight controller and typing in save. So if you found this video useful, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. Any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section underneath this video here on YouTube. And of course, if you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press that red subscribe button and of course, press the bell notification so that you bulls let you know when the next video is out because it could be an INAV tip or we could be blowing up an RC model. <laughs> anyway, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the desktop this morning and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!